Are you going to see family soon? Have you ever considered interviewing them about the family history? Why not record video when you do? Hi, I'm Connie Knox, and I'd like to preface this next video by saying that not only am I a lifelong genealogist, but my day job is as a video professional working in all aspects of television broadcasting, production, and management. So coming up next, I've got a few pro tips for recording your videos for just a few bucks. Let's roll the opener. Here in part two, we're talking about how to record an interview with the family member. For information about types of questions you should ask, please see my interviewing family part one, which is all about the questions we're asking. So here, we're going to talk about how to record the video technically. To see information about my favorite video gear, see my other video about Connie's favorite gear. You'll want to record your family interviews or perhaps just the conversation around the dinner table at maybe Thanksgiving. This is where the family stories come to life. In today's world, the easiest way to accomplish this is with a smartphone. But any digital video camera will work. I don't recommend the old videotape cameras these days. How to transfer those files needs to be an entirely different video. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to record these family conversations. 95% of what you hear during these interviews you will not remember when you get back home. Seriously, you won't remember. You'll miss the little comments or a little gesture that may be very important. Every time I've recorded an interview, no matter how casual it was, I was so grateful I did. And I took a few minutes to record it because when I played it back, my notes were not complete. I misunderstood maybe what was said, or I just didn't catch it the first time. Taking a few extra minutes to set up any kind of camera to record will become a cherished video or audio recording for generations to come. Additionally, you can replay it over and over again, every little tidbit of juicy genealogical information you can get out of it. It's the little stuff that you'll find later to be a huge clue in your research. Prepare in advance of your family reunion or interview with the family. Make sure you have plenty of storage memory on your device and ideally a couple of hours worth of video. Whenever possible, position yourself near the person or persons you're interviewing. I recommend using a microphone attached to whatever device you have, be it a cell phone or a camera. Unless you're within arm's length of your subject with your camera, the built-in mic will not be sufficient to hear the interview. Having a camera that close to somebody could be a little intrusive too, so I recommend connecting an external microphone. They're really affordable and very useful. I use two different types of microphones depending on the situation. I use a lavalier, like the one I'm wearing now. Some good ones are under $17 and clipped to your clothing. Or a mini shotgun microphone, maybe by Rode. This one's under $60 and stays on the camera and I usually use it for outdoor use. These microphones are very affordable and are worth every penny. As I mentioned earlier, my full-time job is in television broadcasting for the last nearly 40 years. So I can tell you that these microphones are actually really quite good for the price. Just make sure that your microphones are fully seated in the mini port of your camera or your cell phone. Make sure that the mic is plugged in and is compatible with your device before purchasing. Check the specifications on your phone and the mic to make sure that they're a match. For example, I use an iPhone 6 Plus and it requires a three ring mini port, like this one. Using built-in microphones on cameras are for the birds, literally. That's all they're good for, picking up the birds chirping outdoors. It will not pick up the sound of voice very well unless maybe you're within arm's length of a person speaking, like doing a selfie. Even when doing selfies, I use a mini shotgun or a lav mic for better sound. I'll show you a demonstration of microphones in another video. For multiple subjects, use a splitter. You can find them for under $12 and use two microphones and record both the interviewee and the interviewer, or perhaps a couple like a husband and wife sitting side by side. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to have quality audio for genealogy. 
You can mess up video all day long and people will tolerate less than perfect video. But without good audio, the entire project is toast. Test your equipment in advance, both audio and video. While you're on location, do a little test recording with the microphone clipped on your family member and ask them for a little testing one, two, three, and then play it back to make sure that you have quality video and audio. Today's cell phone technology has gotten so good that many interviews can be shot with them provided they have enough memory. Make sure that if you're using a cell phone for video that you're recording in a horizontal format and not a vertical format. You'll want to record horizontally so that when you play back on a TV or a computer it matches the format of your screen and you won't have giant black bars on the side of your screen. Test your cell phone in advance to make sure it can shoot horizontally. Almost all cell phones these days do. Without being too intrusive, position your camera reasonably close to your subject. Please don't try to make this a full broadcast style made for TV movie. You don't want to overwhelm the subject with bright lights as if they were in a Hollywood studio. It's very intimidating and can make your subject nervous, uncomfortable, and thus unwilling to share. You'll want to be as low key as possible. Once you have a microphone clipped on your subject, after about 30 seconds, they'll forget it's there. Just caution them in the beginning not to pat themselves on the chest or it will cause a mic to pop. Make sure you ask questions that can't be answered with a simple yes or no, but instead an open-ended question like, tell me about a time when, or use historical family events to help prompt memories. If you're at a family reunion, try and set up your camera in a quiet location and maybe rotate family members in for many interviews. Consider getting to the reunion extra early to interview elders before the rest of the family arrives. Remember to be mindful of how much recording time you have and how much battery life you have. Check your camera manual for the specifications or Google your camera for how much video record time you'll have. Here's a pro tip. To save as much memory as possible when anticipating longer interviews, change the video settings on your camera prior to shooting to a lower resolution. Most of the newer digital video cameras have HD resolution sizes of 480p, 720p, 1080p, and 4K. The smaller the number, the lower the resolution and the potential graininess you'll see. But don't worry about this too much unless you're in a low light situation. To save memory, set your camera to one of the lower settings and to make sure your frame rate is at 30 frames per second or less. For example, setting your camera on 720p at 30 frames per second, you'll save a lot of storage over a longer interview. Setting your camera at 720p as opposed to 1080p will save you more than twice the storage space. At 720p, you're not likely going to see a difference from 1080p for the family interviews. This is just fine for most applications. Check the specifications for your camera well before the interview. If you have, for example, 32 gigabytes of storage, that equals 32,000 megabytes. Therefore, on my cell phone, shooting at 720p with 30 frames per second should get me 533 minutes or 8 hours of video. Shooting at 1080p at 30 frames per second gives 246 minutes or about 4 hours of video. I shoot on both my i6 Plus and my Canon digital SLR camera when I can. I do this for two reasons. One, I like to have two angles of my interview and two, if one camera fails or runs out of storage or memory then the other one usually has the rest of the interview. If you have a digital SLR camera, you can change the batteries and storage cards as needed. However, cell phones are so easy to shoot with that it's hard not to just grab them and start recording. However, when recording interviews, they can run long sometimes, hours even, and you can't change the storage card on most cell phones. Tablets are another good option for recording, such as an iPad or Surface Pro. All of these devices these days do an amazing job with great video quality. If you have the charge cable with you, most cell phones can be plugged in while shooting to save battery. In a pinch, you might even be able to borrow a family member's phone if you're unable to record on yours. So here's a pro tip. Test the audio, wear earbuds or headphones, and check the mics before recording your interview to make sure the audio is clear. You may need to record a test and play it back to hear the audio since you may be using the audio port for microphones. 
I recommend a tripod or a tabletop tripod. Your arms will get tired. When without a tripod, I've propped up my cell phone on a stack of books or whatever was handy. It also makes for a steadier shot and more pleasing to watch later. Lastly, you might be able to solicit the help of a younger member of the family to help you shoot the video. The benefits are it frees you up to ask questions and that young person might just become interested in the family genealogy or maybe video production. Not only am I a genealogist, but a lifelong video professional, and I am amazed at how affordable and easy video gear is today. Gear that used to cost us tens of thousands of dollars is a thing of the past. Most of the gear today is very affordable, and for everyone, it works really well. Coming up next is the right gear at the right price, my unbiased opinion. If you found this helpful, please give me a thumbs up or give me comments below. Also, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and don't forget to ring the bell so that you'll get notified the next time we upload videos. Also, if you're researching in North Carolina, I've got a website devoted to North Carolina researchers at ncancestry.com. Until next time, we'll see you climbing the family tree. through that one.